My name is Kelly Charlie. I am from Sweetwater, Arizona, and my invention is a solar heating system that is supposed to function in a rural community without access to running water or electricity. I go to Navajo Preparatory School in Farmington, New Mexico, where I'm a senior and I'm 18 years old. Living in a rural community, we don't have any sort of electrical heating system in our home, and we mostly burn coal and wood throughout the winter months. I bring in coal in the evening around like five, and so I bring in coal and wood and I bring it over towards the house. I grew up with my grandparents, and so when I started at Navajo Prep, I was gone a lot. And so knowing that they were gonna have to do that themselves every day, was kind of hard for me to, to take in and to, to really accept. And so I started thinking about ways that I could help them come up with a new heating system for their home. When the sun shines on the panel, it heats up antifreeze that's inside of tubing, where that heat is transferred into a bucket of water. And then that heat can also dissipate, like um, move into the rest of the home. A hogan is a traditional home and so it was important for me to make my solar heater to work with a Hogan because I feel like I'm connected to who I am and where I come from and that I've been able to say thank you back to, to the ones who have supported me and been that support system for me. A lot of our school is a polypreparatory school, but we have this huge component of Navajo culture that's really integrated into it that kind of allows us to be like this hot spot just for learning our culture and being able to exchange what we know. I have been working on this project since my freshman year. This will be my fourth year working on the project. Having women in science gives a balance to the world and it just brings you back to, you know, thinking of from another perspective. You know, living at a boarding school, even though I'm away from my family, I have pictures and collages in my room that, that kind of help me to refocus and say, I'm doing this for my family. And then on Fridays is when I actually get to go home. And so my grandma comes and she picks me up and, and then we drive an hour and a half back to Sweetwater. In my family, you know, it's just girls. Like, it's my grandma, my mom, and then my sister. And then, you know, we had my dad and my grandpa, and they were the only two men that were around. And so when they were at work or where they weren't here, my mom was always like, okay, we can do this. We can do this ourselves. Yes, I can ask questions. Yes, I can ask for help. But I also have the power within me to do it myself. It just amazes me the things that she's doing. She tells me about it and I think, wow, you know, how does her mind work? Where, you know, where does she get these ideas from? Well, this side. So it's coming from this. This is directly from the thing. <laughs> Growing up here, sometimes you, you fall, like in life, you kind of just fall into this set of this is how things are and this is how they're supposed to be. And so for me, I looked at it from a different perspective of, why am I letting my, parent, my grandparents go through this? And why am I letting them have to face this struggle when I could do something about it? We can still you know, be connected to our culture in this time and that we won't have to you know, stick to the old ways or we don't have to let go of them too, that we can incorporate new technologies and we can continue to develop and move forward with our culture. <laughs>